The name of this edition of Tactics and Practice is Unreal Data Real Effects, and this will really be the theoretical gist presented by our next speaker. If until the advent of machine learning, data was usually taken as the representation of a physical state or process, for example, as a measurement, this has ceased to be the case as we move deeper into digital environments. Data functions less as a camera and more as an engine, not recording the world, but bringing it into existence. To talk about the growing importance of post-representational data, which may seem unreal, but has very real effects, I invite to the stage Felix Stalder, a prominent thinker on the intersections of culture, politics, technology, and ecology. He's also a professor of digital culture at the Zurich University of the Arts, author of The Digital Condition and Digital Solidarity, among many others. And for those of you who know it, this is a huge deal, a longtime moderator of NetTime mailing list, a crucial nexus of critical net culture. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, my talk is entitled Unreal is the New Real, which kind of indicates that these two categories, real and unreal, have become somewhat problematic. The relationship between language or science and data being a particular type of science and the world that signify it has always been ambiguous, it has always been contentious, and it has always been political. And this is no different with data. Data is not fundamentally different from other systems of signification. So in the shadow of the numerical precision lurks semantic trouble and, as we heard also, potential. At the Latent Spaces Research Project, uh, we are investigating this trouble and the potential that it opens up for agencies. In terms of data, the trouble is usually discussed in representational terms. Data through measurement, and this is the assumption that we usually take, so data through measurement or categorization is something that is derived from the world. And this creates the question, you know, does data represent the world as it really is, which means we are still in a paradigm of objective truth, representing the world as it really is. So we're looking at data from a scientific point of view. And this leads us to questions like, is this the right data? Is it the right amount? Um, what data is collected? Are we missing something? And if you have ever done anything with statistics, questions of sample size and sample qualities will have you know, taken up much of your time. And this leads to questions of, of bias. So from these uh, data, is there a systematic misrepresentation of the world? And these, of course, are really important questions, but they miss something that is equally important and for our project maybe even more central. Because not all science and not all data represent something in the world. Often science precede the world in order to bring something new into the world. And following Austin's famous notion of the speech act, where speech such as I declare you man and wife does not describe but create reality, we might speak of a sign action, or in our case, a data act. And indeed, the ability to make things up and then making them up to make them real is a key feature of the human cultural evolution. And this is a point that uh, Harari makes really strong when he says, the truly unique strait of Homo sapiens is our ability to create and believe fiction. 
All other animals use their communication system to describe reality. We use our communication system to create new realities. And indeed, <clears throat> there's a good argument to be made that this development has started at the beginning of um, you know, human as modern humans, probably including Neanderthals, when at the same time art, religion, and politics emerged at the same time based on neurological changes that enabled us to remember and communicate our hallucinations. So there was a need to create an aesthetic to express these hallucinations that you could not simply point to. And there was a need to attribute these hallucinations to something, to another world, to a spiritual world. This is the birth of religion. And for the first time, um, primate societies became organized on something that was not based on the body. That was not based on gender or age or physical strength or bloodlines or anything that also structures complex um, primate societies, but it was actually uh, started to be organized around this ability to hallucinate and express these hallucinations in convincing terms. And for such sign, the question what they refer to, where they come from, is much less important than what they do. So where, where do these uh, signs go to? This means we are no longer or have not been in the early times in a paradigm of science on <clears throat> looking for objective truth, but we are really in a paradigm of political economy. It was only in, this, in the scientific revolution of the 18th century that kind of empirical truth and then the, the ability to reference empirical reality was taken to be the only criterion for truth. Today, techno science or postmodern science, however you want to call it, really doesn't focus on truth anymore. It focuses on instrumentality, and instrumentality means it focuses on control. So questions about truth, whether the data represents the world, are kind of besides the point. Cybernetics, more generally, dispensed with any notion of meaning, of kind of language having a meaning or, or data having any meaning, and it only recognized mathematical patterns and logical operations. So data does not refer to anything other than itself and to other data. And machine learning is really pattern matching, finding one pattern and recognizing it somewhere else. Under the current statistical paradigms of machine learning, it's really impossible, or at least very, very difficult, to go beyond that. Which leads you know, many you know, tech bros to think, oh my god, we're already living in a computer simulation because we can no longer distinguish between one and the other. And of course, this is bullshit. It's a very sad and kind of, you know, teenage version of Descartes, I think, therefore I am, which we all know has its own set of problems. So data becomes unreal in a representational sense. It doesn't represent anything other than data. And because of the generality of our mediated experience and our mediated knowledges, uh, Carmen and Doma have mentioned that, it is now often easier and more efficient to change data in order to change the world rather than to change the world and then see it show up in data. So data becomes unreal in this representational sense, but it becomes very real in an instrumental sense. It has effects, real effects. That's where the title comes from. Thus, we are in a continuous process of making the unreal real. As I said, this is nothing fundamentally new. This is kind of a, a key feature of, of human culture, of what makes humans humans. Um, but now it seems there's a lot more of it. If truth is no longer a criterion, we need to ask different questions. So not where does data come from, but what does data do? How does it affect the world? What kind of new real does it create? 
And we need to ask questions of who makes things up. And I don't mean here that we are living in a post-truth world. But what I mean is that there are more than one truth and it matters what stories we tell about to, to bring it into the world. And once we start asking these questions, we realize that the capacities of making things real are very unequally distributed. And when focusing on what data do, it focuses uh, obviously also on what are the consequences of making things up in one particular way rather than in another way, which ultimately leads us to raise the questions, do we want to live in a world constructed in this way? And most often we, we should say no. But before we kind of enter a panic about, you know, everything is just made up, I would really like to stress that this is a moment of freedom here, that we can actually think and make real different relationships, different things in the world. But with that freedom, obviously, also comes come real consequences. So what we do actually is not just an epiphenomena, you know, culture playing around, but it actually has the, the potential to um, influence the world as it is. So we are in the constant process of inventing new worlds. So let's go back to the image at the beginning which you perhaps wondered what it is. And what we see here is the visitor center of Lascaux number four. It already indicates that there are a couple of those. So there's the first one, uh, which is about 20, 25,000 years old. It's a prehistoric site. It's one of those moments where art, politics, and religion emerged at the same time. Uh, but it's almost inaccessible or it's totally inaccessible to most people since 1963. Then there's Lasco II, um, a replica made in uh, 1983, which was first shown in Paris and then installed near the original site in, in the Dordogne. And then there's Lasco III, which was created in uh, 2012, which is used for a traveling exhibition around the globe. So this is the, the highly mobile version of the cave. And now we have um, Lascaux 4, which you see here, which is the most accurate representation, uh, you know, measured to millimeter fraction uh, of the actual cave, but what you see, it doesn't look like a cave at all. It has nothing to do with the cave, but it's the most accurate uh, representation of the cave, and it allows you as a visitor to do things that would be absolutely impossible in the cave, for example, to actually see the things that are painted, because the, as, as, as you know, the, the cave was not illuminated. Uh, it was all about you know, this mystery of things appearing and disappearing. Many of the um, things, uh, of the paintings, are actually in totally inaccessible part of the cave, because that was part of the religious ceremony to, to go there and you know, trip out while you stuck in the, in the cave. So you didn't actually see it. So, but now here in this, in this cave that has nothing to do with the cave anymore, you can actually see something. And um, for me, this is, is, is kind of a hopeful and a, an interesting way of thinking about unreal data that actually opens up uh, a world, an, an imagination of a world that could be and should be quite different from the one we are forced to inhabit. Thank you.